shared with, with Trey and he had asked for me to put together just this quick presentation and share uh, similar to the course that we had just taken. So hopefully it's something that it, uh, intrigues you or, or sparks some questions even in the classroom. So to start off the introduction, we're going to, I don't know if this is in the way since it's in my way. Does everybody see this? Yeah, we see it. Okay, can I minimize it? Oh, I'm sorry, we just see your introduction screen here. Introduction platform similarity. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. All right, so you don't see the main. So the presentation, what you're going to see is uh, three three different headings of platform similarities. We'll start off some differences and, and some similarities between the on-ground setting and the internet online setting as I've learned it. So from the online perspective, three major pieces that we'll talk about is a pre-assignment activity, setting the stage, proximity and sensitivity, two-way communication. Along with that, some of the major strategies, which is what hopefully we'll dive into quite a bit, the concept of champions in the classroom, speaking to the audience, and then move, move into some tools implemented to increase engagement, tools that I've played around with over the last year or so. So then we'll end with some questions. So starting off with the platform similarities, the pre-assignment activity. Some of the pieces that I've learned from the on-ground and the online platforms is online you lose visual cues. You can't see the lost faces. Uh, you, you can't see the body language with that you're able to in the on-ground course and everything's there in front of you so you kind of have to look at it from a different advantage you can gauge these dynamics from a different perspective and I've learned for me that's been the pre-assignment activity so throughout each of the pre-assignment activities I've learned to really look through them and see which students are openly saying I don't like this course or I don't I'm a little afraid of this course if, especially if you've taught a statistics course or uh, I've taught quality and operations and usually someone will tell you they're they're a little worried they're a little concerned about starting so that's a good way to gauge some of uh, how much need or how much work will you need to do or how much attention we have to pay for a certain students so for me using the pre-assignment activity to gauge student comfort has been huge over the last year so and it has helped me look at it has helped me look at uh, the discussions especially that first week discussions I start that radar goes off right away if I see uh, a a pre-assignment activity where the student is starting to show concerns, you're going to see it in the discussions right away. Setting the stage, uh, for me, letting the students know that I'm going to be in there asking a lot of questions. And I like to write this. I promise I won't go crazy asking questions, but I promise I won't ask crazy questions because in the end, that's what we're here for. It's a deep dive below the surface and, and really understand the concepts and the theories that we're that we're talking about. Not just give surface answers and, and show up at an interview with a piece of paper where you don't know how to defend or speak to or actually articulate what you've learned throughout your courses. So this lets them know you're going to be looking and also more important it lets them know you're going to be engaged. You're going to be in there talking to them. So setting that stage right up front helps them that I've seen set some comfort. Proximity and sensitivity. This is something that I've learned from my history along training, along my from my training career, my technical training days. Uh, what does hiding look like in an online and ongoing environment? Sometimes I don't like using the word hiding because it has almost a negative kind of tone. However, what, what, you know, what students look uncomfortable and things such as that, the more important question beyond that is what's behind it. So, so you know, and on the ground, this is similar to the students, eyes down, avoiding eye contact with the instructor. Online, it may look like one or two sentence responses in a, in a discussion post. Again, the more important question is why is the student uh, not as confident to engage you in, in the conversation? So on an on-ground, if you open up and uh, bring attention to a student in front of everyone that may shell out the student and they may not get what you're looking for to begin with. So I've learned this proximity. The closer you stand next to a person, the more 
they're going to pay attention to you. The more awareness they're going to give you. So throughout my years in training, especially at a, regardless of the platform that I'm at, if I'm speaking from a class, I have a student or someone who is in the back of the classroom with their eyes on a laptop or their eyes somewhere else where they're clearly not paying attention, I don't break my my presentation I don't break what I'm talking about but a lot of times I since I'm old when I move around the classroom a, a lot I start walking near that person and nine times out of ten that person's eyes are gonna start bringing up the closer they hear my voice walking towards them the more they start paying attention the more their eyes will come up and I'll usually stand next to them and talk for a couple of minutes and this person is, is now attentively looking at me and nine times out of ten that has worked. There are other times where I will get close to the person and they may not look until I tap them on the shoulder or something to give them another cue to say, hey, how are you doing? Are you paying attention? Uh, and it works. It works. The on ground, as I said, there's a strategy is to keep talking. One thing that I do warn is don't make a beeline for that person. If you're standing in front of the class and you see, don't just walk straight to that person because now you're obviously bringing attention to that person in the classroom. And whether right or wrong, it's really our approach. The methodology is really in the approach. You can be right about asking someone to pay attention to getting that don't make a beeline for that person just let them know you, 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 you're looking for some attention you're looking for some engagement calling out uh, that I want to walk back there and I have a question to engage and I've had students who Else, the multitaskers where they're doing something, you call them and you ask them a question, they give you the answer right away. And I'll challenge you, I'll say, are you answering because you heard the last 10 seconds of what I said? And they'll bring 75% of what I've been talking about or the lesson that I've been discussing and I move along. I move along as I say some people can focus on two different things at the same time the multitaskers I don't take it personal if they can do that and they that's their learning style as long as they're learning I move on and, uh, that's just a piece of proximity that I always love to share it has worked that's the biggest component and learning strategy that has learned for that has worked for me whether I've been training and I've, I've been training for the last uh, eight to ten years in different platforms and that is the one on ground that has always that I've been able to get some awareness get some attention from different class now online challenging surface surface responses is another way of that because it's a little bit difficult to now you don't see the person but you can actually compare you've got students that will give you a two-page almost essay in a discussion and you have students that may give you two to three or just to barely meet that 150 words type of post and that, again that's another another opportunity in the online to challenge them a little bit I always say there's a personal myth that I've learned there are more opportunities to hide in an online environment but if you know or you you know what to look for those surface answers or those one or two just making 150 words then you have the opportunity to challenge those responses and get deeper into it so acknowledge sensitivity I always say this again and I talked about this a little bit when as if you were on ground as opposed to making a beeline or or bringing too much attention to a student who you may feel is not paying attention the same thing on an online platform we don't get to see the faces of the students on the other side of the computer so our dialogue our discussion post our, our sensitivity to responding is also very similar we don't we don't have the fortunate of having tone or voice or words other than just the perception of how something is taken so I always say acknowledge sensitivity when you're challenging any surface responses 
the next one, stress for, versus frustration. Now, I, I, I like this because I had a colleague bring this up to me a few years back, and, and we had a debate on whether stress and frustration were two different things. So talking about two-way communication, stress and frustration on both sides, dialogue versus the discussion post, online communication versus real dialogue. There's, a miscus there's in my opinion, a misconception that online is so much easier. It offers flexibility. However, when you go in there and you realize that you have to answer posts or if you're the instructor, you have to read all of these posts and, and respond to them, now that's time consuming. I can have a dialogue, I can have a two minute dialogue in a course room on, on ground and that two minute dialogue turns into a three to four or five paper, page paper on an on ground, I mean in an online platform. So that's a misconception that I found. Some students have been a little bit frustrated since we're on stress versus frustration because of the misconception that they think is going to offer them more time and what it does is it offers flexibility so knowing that know that sometimes students will give you quick short answers because of their busy lives or, or, or whatever it is so you'd have to decipher is it a something that I need to challenge to dig deeper and move the student along or is it because this student really has a lot going on on, on her plate so is frustration is it frustration or is it stress? Stress in the end of our of my debate with a colleague is stress is what happens to you, the physiological, and frustration is the emotion. The reason I bring that up, and this wasn't the person I had the uh, debate with, but I had a very interesting conversation with a 72-year-old colleague of mine who's got his PhD quite some time ago. The conversation, to sum it up, he's his PhD is in education, so we were talking about today's student. What does today's student look like in comparison to when he went to school? As a matter of fact, when I went to school. So some of the differences, obvious differences, is right off the top. I did my PhD on a computer, meaning my, all of my research is on my laptop. I always say I spent 10 years in my basement while my kids were upstairs growing up. Uh, he did his, his, his PhD on a typewriter in a library somewhere. So he did his PhD in a typewriter sitting in a library and had to uh, most likely, I don't know how much, spend some money on, on copiers. What's the difference between those two dynamics? I perform search queries. He had to physically look through thousands or however many articles that he had to, to defend his theory, to defend his thesis. The difference is I was a little quicker. I had the opportunity to go on online. I had the power of the internet right here at my fingertips. So to him or to his generation, my generation may not have had to work as hard to get these PhDs. And I bring this up because a lot of times in education or in general conversation from generations to generations, we bring up these ideologies and we bring up these these theories to say someone else isn't working as hard as I am. So unlike my friends or my 72-year-old friend's life, all he had to do was focus solely on school responsibilities. Today's students, some are managing parent responsibilities, some are single parents working, school, others are part of uh, a, a, a partnership of family where their husband's doing this or the wife, that whatever it is, there are responsibilities there. Both parties are working to support the family and finding time to study and manage these responsibilities, whether here, there, or these are real life circumstances that the students are going through today. So when I bring up stress versus frustration, how personal are we taking resistance when something isn't happening as we want it to happen? Frustration is there. And the level that I say, how much stress are we going to add if we don't support or find the right methodology to dig in and challenge the, the students thinking without really beginning to stress them out where they take on uh, other impact or their impact by other issues because now they begin to stress. So 
those are things and again I always say there's an element of trust and ethical responsibilities that you can't really dig into but just always be aware in my opinion that today's learning environment is frustration frustrating enough how stressful do we want to make it and there's always a component of how much coddling are you doing how much coaching well there what are the different learning styles there's so many different ways to reach a student that you have to change methodology every once in a while to reach because not every face is the same. So those are just some of the differences and similarities that I personally can say, okay, this is kind of how I see it. This is an online platform versus the on ground platform. So some of the major strategies that I've learned again, the concept of the champion in the classroom, I've also learned that I'm not always the one to connect with everyone. Uh, in my years of training and, and, and management, I'm not always the one to teach leadership to every manager. So you always find a champion, and by that I mean I stand in the classroom and I look to see which student, and this is an on-ground or the training facility, which of the students or who begins to speak that all heads turn and they're listening to that person and then you can gauge, are they understanding that person? As a professor, you can speak to a certain concept some students won't understand their colleague will begin to paraphrase what you're saying and now they understand. That's the student that you use to teach the others. As long as they're saying the same and they're paraphrasing, it doesn't matter how different or indifferent as long as the theory connects, as long as the, the, the concept is being taught correctly. It doesn't matter. We have so many different ways of understanding. So that's what I consider my champion. And it's not always the same person because this person may reach three or four other students and there's two that are still lost, that are still wondering, huh, can you explain it to me? Someone else will begin speaking and those two, you can see the light bulbs go off and now you start to reach and facilitate and engage and use students as mediums to understand and to relate and facilitate more information onto those others and you just stand back at times and watch the dialogue just take off. You can watch. So that's what I mean about concepts of a of champion. What does this person look like again? It's the person that all heads turn and you can see the heads bobbing up and down and you can see say yes. You can see the light bulbs go off when this person talk. Even if they're saying the same thing you're saying, that's the person you need speaking. And usually you can dialogue and, and, and transfer with that person where they will start picking up and it changes. In an online environment is very similar. Again, the only way to in a cat or my own opinion as I have caught it online is when other students jump in and start discussing with this person on a post. Well that's the person that you start choosing and you and you begin to kind of move or, or hit towards the other students, hey, why don't you look at so-and-so's post, so-and-so had a great post, or the students will jump in between the dialogue. If I go back and forth I, in a discussion post with students, other students have jumped in and, and will begin and pick up the discussion from there. An example of Autumn, this last week's discussion, her, her young lady's name is Autumn, and my discussion with her in the post engaged other students. So that's how you start to choose your champions. And again, I would say that it's never the same person. These champions will have to be a different person, and that's how you can engage. It's, it's that level of comfort where some students may not feel confident enough to join the conversation, unless another colleague of theirs, they feel more comfortable. I'm stopping for a minute outside of my deck and there's no so I know I'm pretty sure you guys hear you. So they may feel more comfortable with another student 
then they will engage in you as the professor in the conversation. And the more comfortable they feel by week two, week three, week four, they're starting to, their, their comfort sense will increase and now they're speaking to you as the professor in, in, in a different comfort level than that first week. So that's why I always say it's never the same person. Champions must be alternated, whether by you or someone else. It's the game of tag. I call it the game of dialogue tag. Now bring someone else to the conversation, and and that's how they're all grab. Some strategies again. Speaking to the audience is very similar as I just I just spent saying. Different people will understand different learning styles. We all many different learning styles from the right brain processors to your left brain processors. Your right brain is so much more inductive, whether you versus your left brain who are more deductive. These are your linear learners. They want everything in steps. Where a right brain learner, you can speak to them, and it's just an epiphany. Ah, I got it. You just have to keep talking to those, and and they'll get it. I know because I'm one. <laughs> Concrete. There, there's so many different learning styles, so many different personalities sitting in front of you in an online, in an online class or behind that computer that you can't see. So, again, speaking to the audience, choose, fall back on your champions and learn to see who is reacting to who and pair them up for the end game is for them to learn and, and to get it all and move on. Tools that I've implemented, SurveyMonkey has been very, it's, it's a great little tool. I'm sure many have used it. This is better online. It allows you to collect some feedback and provide the students from, with safety. Some of the differences online is really helped me pull a course together. And it allowed me to realize I was spending too much time on a topic when they were really struggling on another topic. And again, your more outgoing personalities are going to ask questions. So if you have that pattern start to jump up, that survey monkey allowed me to realize based on that pattern, there are more students that were feeling the same way. So I had to switch. And I was able to grab that feedback on an on ground. You keep the whole thing. Uh, I guess I would say you speak to it and you keep the whole thing quiet in the sense that <laughs> the students are always looking around to guess who had the feedback because they are or who asked the question because they've got enough time sitting with each other. So it's a, it's a very valuable tool that I found online in an online environment. Announcements is another great <laughs> announcements. Uh, I just provide students again. We're so used to headlines. We're, we're so used to reading in, in today's society, just the headlines and, and and grabbing that information fast. So that's what the announcements allows you to do. It just allows you to grab and just speak to everyone. For example, if there's a discussion that you would like everyone to kind of go and read, that's a quick way to send a message for everyone to read a, a particular post. WebEx meetings, similar to uh, the GoTo meeting that we are on, this has been great. It, it allows you to review the screens live. You, you can be on the phone with a student, but I've been on the phone with a student where I'm asking, can you tell me what you're looking at? Can you explain what's on your screen right now? Uh, and, and, that, and I can hear the frustration in the student's voice. So the WebEx would allow you as this to share screens back and forth and see things live for what it is. And this tool, the WebEx has been valuable. It's been one of the best tools that I've that I've used. Now when students pop up a question, I, I, I said, you want to have a WebEx meeting? I can show you right away. And it, it's been, this tool is, is great because they can see it. They can see it right there in front of them and you're not, you're eliminating. Sometimes the students have only five, ten minutes just to see something and the WebEx allows you to share those screens to do that. So that's what I've had and, I, and as I said, the pre-assignment activity allows you to correlate to just let that radar go off. Who do you need to start paying attention to help? Who, who seems, doesn't seem as confident set the stage proximity on ground valuable online again just 
be careful how you challenge the surface answers, but it's, again, the same way if they know you're there, they're going to sense and they're going to give you that the, the awareness and they're going to respond, react is the word that I'm looking for. The concept of champions in a class, whether on ground or online, in my opinion, as a professor, you can't reach everyone. There are times where students have to learn from each other because they're understanding each other. And I would say never take it personal, just that's what we're here. We're here to teach, to, to share knowledge. Now, whether they're getting it from each other because they're able to translate, then all the power to them because that's the end game is to grab the information and move forward. Speaking to the audience is the same. Survey Monkey has been great for me in an online because you can't see everyone the announcements uh, excellent and the WebEx meetings have been in that I mean the WebEx have just paid for so much where I I don't know if I can't stop talking enough about this because it really engages and it gives the students the ability to see exactly firsthand and have their answers uh, the questions answered right away and that is what I have any questions I have a question. Yes. Hello? Hello? Yes, go ahead. One of the questions I have is in the discussions. Um, yes. On a topic, and many times I'll pose a follow up question, and because the discussion has a deadline. The students are very focused on meeting that deadline rather than enjoying themselves and ad hocing questions, follow up, posing new questions. Um, do you experience any of that? I have, and what I do is I start very the, during the first week. I send out an announcement, and again, acknowledging sensitivity, what I say is if I ask you a question, I expect a response because if we were an on-ground course and I ask you a question, I'm expecting a response. So it's very similar to that. So in an online environment, if I ask you a question and you don't respond, then it's no different from standing in front of you waiting for a response in a live class. Uh, I've done that for the last four to five online classes and it's been received very well. And I've had some students email me back and say, Are, do you mean you're taking points away if I don't respond? And I say, no, it means that your first response may not get you the points that you're looking for. Now, if you answer the question that I'm asking, that's going to get you to the next question because you may have provided a response, a proficiency response in a sense. You may have just touched on the topic, but you're looking for mastery. You're looking for something that gives deeper meaning. So you understand the concept far beyond just the name. And that's that's what I've had in discussion with the students. Now, again, I... There, I don't ask any more questions after Saturday past one o'clock or two because I also acknowledge that there is a deadline. So a lot of the questions that I ask, I hit them on a Friday, on a Friday, and sometimes on a Saturday morning because I know that a lot of students are in there by afternoon and they can answer the questions. So I, I set the stage in the announcements, and that's really the way that I word it. If, if I ask you a question, I'm looking for a response because if I ask you a question in live then and you don't respond, it's got to be rude. You're not. You're just standing there ignoring me. So that's the way that I phrase it, and that's the way that I set the stage in the, in the announcements. Okay. And again, if they ask, are you taking points away, that's the way I phrase it. No, your original response may be... X and answer my question will get you to the next level. I think that's good. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Anyone else? Why can you uh, 
touch base uh, a little more on give us some specific examples on how you've used SurveyMonkey or when you've used SurveyMonkey in the course? Sure, SurveyMonkey. So I was teaching a strategic class, a strategic management class. And our first case study, I noticed that a lot of the responses were HR related soft skills touch type of responses, meaning a lot of the, the responses were where well, the manager should have did a better job in getting the team together or the manager should have acknowledged that X team was upset. So a lot of that's usually what I refer to the soft skills. So they're really they were really coming after the manager, going after the manager as opposed to talking about market share, as opposed to talking about what's going on in the economy. The, the much bigger picture because it, it was, it is a, a, a financial class in a sense, it's a strategic management class, so you're looking at market share, you're looking at the economy, you're looking at all of these other figures that are on a more global scale. The second week, they were very similar, and in my discussion post, when I challenged questions, I was getting some frustration patterns from the students and realized, hmm, how many of the students have had P&L, or how many of the students, you know, it could have, they could have been exposed a while back. So the other element is the simulation. There's a, there's a very sophisticated simulation that's part of this course. I realized they're also frustrated with the simulation, which you expect throughout week one, but there's a short, I would say, really fast learning curve to it once once you get to it, and I wasn't seeing that. So I, I sent a, a, a web, uh, not a WebEx, a survey monkey with, I believe, four or five questions, maybe six at the high end, and I was asking, uh, you know, some very general questions. What is frustrating you about the course? What would you like the instructor to focus on? What are you having difficulties with? Uh, is there anything that the instructor is doing that you wish he wouldn't in the sense of teaching? Uh, where should he be focusing on? Is or is the, t is the professor style good? Are you learning? Are you engaging? And I, I had some feedback. Professor is doing good. Professor is great. Simulation, hate it. Simulation, hate it. Please change it. Please take it. And I was like, ah, I need to stop focusing on the uh, articles and really begin to get back over here and talk about the simulation. So uh, off of the Survey Monkey results, I was able to set up some WebEx meetings and had some one-on-one -on -one or some teams really go off and talk about and do the simulation in front of them. So this was during probably week four, week three, week four. And they all became, they all began, started feeling much, much more comfortable. It was the simulation that was tripping them up and I was only sensing it. And in a six week class, you don't have that luxury to stand back and analyze and wonder what is frustrating the class because they have to move on. So that's an example of, uh, between looking at the case studies and understanding that it wasn't the case studies because it was the simulation that was really tripping them, tripping them up. And I was able to gather that data from the survey monkey results. Yeah, it sounds like you use it as a great way to, again, you were assessing what am I doing well and what can I do better, and which then empowers the students to get involved, right? And I think all of us, having been learners in the past, know how powerful that can be. If I feel like my voice is heard, I'm going to engage a lot more in the classroom. So it, it sounds like an amazing tool to use that for. And then Absolutely. I love how you use the WebEx to kind of take it a step further, too. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Other questions from anybody else? If you uh, don't have any other questions, I think we'll go ahead and start to wrap this up. And I want to thank you all for coming and attending this uh, webinar with Juan. Um, I, we did record it, and I'm going to send that out so that people can, can reference it back. Um, again, two of the biggest tools Juan talked about being SurveyMonkey and uh, WebEx. I'll also include in the information some links to those tools. So you can start to explore how to use them yourselves. Um,
And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me or to contact Juan. Um, one thing I want to mention too is um, as Director of Faculty Development, there's some new trainings that are coming out soon. Um, starting May 9th, we have a Well for Educators course, which is wonderfully empowered leaders in learning. That's what we're calling Well for the teacher side. Um, if you're interested, just shoot me an email. We'll also have, starting hopefully in June, some uh, advanced on-ground and advanced online training that go deeper into some strategies like these to engage students on ground and online, to empower them, and to, be, uh, to become better educators in those areas. So please pay attention to those emails. If you're interested in signing up, just give me an email. Again, if, any, if there's no other questions, we'll go ahead and finish it up. Um, and thank you again for attending. All right, thank you.